So carbon dioxide is a uh, compound that we all know. I mean, it's, it's, it's out in the air. It's globally uh, emitted, let's say, uh, let's say on, on a basically high level. So there is a lot of CO2 being emitted because of our industrial activities. Uh, we, are, we are driving cars, for instance. They emit a lot of CO2. And CO2 has been connected with the greenhouse effect, yeah? global warming. So this is probably true. Um, on the other hand, if you think about it, carbon dioxide is a very interesting, let's say, what we call carbon uh, feedstock. So it's a synton. It's something that we can use in chemistry to make useful, chem uh, let's say, chemicals. Uh, we call these chemicals value-added chemicals. Chemicals like polymers, uh, intermediates for pharmaceutical compounds, and so on. So it is, in principle, a very interesting, uh, let's say, synton, a very in interesting building block. However, it's very stable. So it's not very easy to convert it into, let's say, useful chemicals. Um, the reason why we got engaged in doing carbon dioxide, uh, let's say, chemistry and catalysis was, let's say, not that we can solve the uh, global emission problem. Yeah? Because the amount of carbon dioxide that we are currently using is not that much. So we're, if we are emitting, let's say, 100 equivalents of carbon dioxide, we only use maybe five or six on an annual basis, so we still have an increasing carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. However, one needs to have dreams. Probably in about 30, 40, 50 years from now, we will be doing much better, and this is why we you know, have been engaged in this carbon dioxide catalysis research. So one of the problems, as I said, is, is how to convert carbon dioxide efficiently. You need catalysis. Catalysis is a technique that allows you to use, uh, let's say, lower temperatures, lower pressures, more, let's say, sustainable conditions. So one of the topics here in the Institute is using sustainable chemistry for our societies to make societies, let's say, cleaner, to make less use of uh, energy and resources in order to uh, get products that are of our interest. So like I said, we have a, a, a few ongoing research line in my group. So one of the uh, research line is to make uh, a particular product, which we call organic carbonates. And when we screened the literature, one of the problems was associated with the reactivity. So we have uh, focused uh, on reactivity, improving reactivity uh, to, to convert, let's say, carbon dioxide in a much faster way. And to do so, we have also thought about how can we do that in a sustainable way making use of, let's say, uh, uh, components. So components that we find perhaps, you know, in, 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 uh, in, in, uh, in our surroundings, you know, in nature, uh, that are cheap, readily available, so that we are not uh, focusing too much on, um, let's say, resources that are depleting. Yeah? So at some point, for instance, fossil fuels, uh, we all know that we are using gasoline, you know, to drive our cars. At some point, that will, you know, be uh, let's say, finishing. So we need to come up with alternatives. And we believe that carbon dioxide can be converted into a range of different chemicals that can help to at least replace uh, those chemistries that are based on fossil fuels. So one example is organic carbonates. Organic carbonates are also added to, uh, let's say, uh, to gasoline uh, as a component. So that, that is a typical example. So how do we do that? How do we improve on reactivity? Now, we have designed a, a catalyst system that is now able to produce the fastest reaction uh, recorded so far up to date uh, in this particular area of research. So this, this catalyst is, is ex extremely fast. It's based on, on, uh, on a metal and an organic framework. The organic framework is very simple. It's cheap. The metal that we use is aluminium. So this is an earth abundant metal, and like I said, so it's more sustainable. And in that way, we have combined both sustainable chemistry with very high activity and usually what we do when we do these reactions, so when we test our uh, hypotheses and test our, let's say, catalyst, we, uh, we come here, so we have typical reactors. We call them autoclaves. These are reactors that can be operated on the high pressure. And we put the catalyst inside. We put uh, all the substrates, as we call them, inside. And then we pressurize with carbon dioxide. And at the end of the day, we cool down, we depressurize, so we, we vent the uh, CO2 that is still present, and then we analyze, and then we'll look at how fast the reaction has actually, uh, has actually taken place. So we found by, by 
designing this catalyst by having a lot of these reactions uh, carried out in these kind of, uh, let's say, systems, that the catalyst is actually one of the most active ones ever reported today. So what about future work? So it's very nice that we have very nice reactivity. Can we expand now our activities in the field of CO2 catalysis? Can we make other pro uh, products? One of the type of products that we want to make are biorenewable uh, polymers. Yeah? So this is, I think, a very interesting field. So you take a compound from, uh, let's say, uh, nature, and you convert it into a polymer uh, when combining with carbon dioxide. So this allows you to, to use two uh, compounds that are present in, let's say, in the world, in a very abundant way, and combine it into a product of, of commercial interest. And this is something that we are currently investigating. And also the formation of pharmaceutically relevant intermediates so that we can make a compound based on carbon dioxide and then convert it into something which has relevance in pharmaceutical industry. And as we all know, drugs uh, are, are very important to, um, let's say, to solve a number of issues, you know, health issues. And this is something that we are also like to, uh, to work on in future time.